Hello my lovelies, excuse the wet hair, I've just come back from doing the Ellesmere 10k and it's my only day off I've had in a while from work which is why videos have been very few and far between at the moment but I'm finally getting round to filming my July reads video. Now July, not the best of reading months, not the worst of reading months, I only managed to read four books which is more than I'm getting done in August right now so I'm just going to go through those books with you today. The first book I finished in July is Heartless by Marissa Meyer and I absolutely love this book so much. This book is a Alice in Wonderland retelling so it tells the story of how the Queen of Hearts became the Queen of Hearts and at one time she was just a young girl in love. Now this book did everything right. It is exactly how a retelling should be done. It's true to its source material in the way the characters act and the way the world is built but the plot is something on, on its own that is completely different, completely unique and so good. It is written in a way that's so fluent that you don't actually have to know anything about Alice in Wonderland to know what's going on in this book but at the same time it is packed full of references to the source material. I think the way it does its best is in its world building. It's completely fantastical and a beautiful world full of weird and wonderful things but it's not so nonsensical that it obstructs narrative, it doesn't take you out of the book itself. But also in saying this, none of it is forced into the source material, it feels like it was meant to be this way all along, so none of the actions that the characters take, none of the aspects of the world feel like they've been forced to be that way in order to slot themselves into the source material, it just feels like this is how the Queen of Hearts was all along. Another thing I loved about this book is that every time I thought I knew how Kath was going to become the Queen of Hearts, Marissa Mai took me in a completely different direction, she kept me on my toes the whole way through. And that moment when she finally does say off with his head is such, such a fitting moment. You understand the character's motives completely. You get why she has become the way she has become. And I also just love the characters in it like Jess. I love the love story. I'm saying love quite a bit. But the love story is its own thing in itself. It's not a typical love story and it just all fits so perfectly. So I've given Heartless 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read is one of the books that I'm reading for my dissertation because I'm doing my dissertation on the atomic bombs in literature and this is Black Rain by Masuji Ibushi. This is a fictionalised novel but it is based on the memoirs of an actual woman who was caught up in the Black Rain that fell after Hiroshima so it's radioactive. Now the blurb will make out that Yazuko is going to be the main focus of this story but it's actually more focused on her uncle as it's not just her diary that's being put into this, it's also his account of what happened in Hiroshima that day that's also worked into the story. This book doesn't so much have its own narrative, it switches between the two accounts of Hiroshima, but this book is so upfront with what it tells you about Hiroshima. It is claimed to be one of the most successful and the most honest like novelizations of what happened in Hiroshima that day, and I found it beautiful and horrific and traumatising and the perfect text for my dissertation so much in this about the people stories of Hiroshima not the factual stories of Hiroshima but the actual things that happened to actual people and the way that they were killed in such horrible manners or the way that they survived and were treated afterwards. It's just a fantastic portrayal of what happened to Hiroshima and what happened to the survivors as this book is actually set after the war and it's Yasuko's uncle writing down her account and his account to give to a doctor in order for her to marry because in order for people who were atom bomb affected or had a atom bomb disease they had to have certificates claiming that they were radiation sickness free in order for them to marry so this is why the, his, the account in the story is being written down but because it's trying to stick so true to the stories but also writing in a way that is stylized for a novel or Japanese novel it does have some parts of the story which are a little bit dry as they're just describing the formalities of things that happened which is real life so it had to go in there but it's just not quite as interesting as the gory parts that I was really interested in pulling apart for my dissertation and yeah so if you want an insight into Hiroshima or if you want just an insight into Japanese culture this is a book that you definitely have to read and I've given it four stars the next two books I read were part of my Reading Rush week, which I kind of failed at. I'll link my vlog to it below. But the first book I read was Etiquette and Espionage by Gail Carriger. It took me a while to realise that this is Etiquette and Espionage. Not Etiquette, Espionage, because the and is sort of hidden. This is sort of a steampunk book. 
about 14 year old Sofiana, which I struggled in my head to read every time because Sofiana is Sofiana, Sofronia is a weird word that I kept shortening it to Sophie in my head. And it's about how she is chosen to go to an etiquette school, which also teaches them how to be spies and kind of assassins. It's never really explained fully, which is one of the issues I had with this book, but it's it's an etiquette and espionage school. So this follows our 14 year old protagonist, Sophronia, Sophriana, Sophie in my head, as she is chosen to go to school for the first time. It's meant to be a steampunk world, but I think the steampunk aspect of it was just lacking so much. Like, you know it was steampunk by the things that are in it, but the descriptions are just missing. I just think the world building for this is missing, maybe because this is actually a young adult spin-off set in the same world as her actual adult steampunk series. I think I didn't really look into this too much because it hasn't taken my fancy that much. The other issue I had with this book is the fact that there's werewolves and vampires in it. Which normally wouldn't be an issue for me because I love werewolves, vampires and gothic things since there is a Hannibal Lecter poster right there and a full scale medical skeleton standing right behind you just because I thought it was cool not because I was ever going to do medicine. But the issue I had with these werewolves and vampires is that it wasn't explained. Maybe because of this being a like spin-off even though I think it's meant to be its own plot in its own right but yeah it's just they were just shoved in there it felt it felt a little bit like vampires well shoved in there and it was written in that way you know how everyone's meant to already know how it works so there wasn't much chance for exposition of why vampires and werewolves were there we just sort of assumed that we knew like the characters knew but I could have just done with like, why are they there? How do they function in society? What roles do they play? It's just sort of, it's in the background, which I don't like so much. But what I did like was the mundane details about the school. I wasn't so much interested in the plot that, and therefore I don't feel the need to dive into the rest of the series for this. But the actual details of how the school functions, what they wear, what classes they have, how the classes are assessed, the fact that the school is on some sort of floating air ship thing, which does fit with the steampunk thing but doesn't get explained but uh, yeah so I really liked the classroom aspect of this I didn't like the actual plot so much it's not that this was a bad book it's just not a brilliant book and I think I'm also about five years too late to really enjoying it because it's just a little immature in its writing style even though it's meant to be young adult so I think it's more the lower end of young adult so about five years ago if I had to pick this book up and seen yes vampires werewolves steampunk espionage, Victorian outfits, I would have absolutely loved it but now I just couldn't get past the writing style just being a little bit too immature. So I'm not going to dive into the rest of the series but I'm not also, also not mad that I've read it and I'm probably going to keep it around maybe just in case I do want to read the rest of the series but I'll probably read them as library books if they are in any of the libraries I'm not going to purchase the rest of the books. So I've given this 3.5 stars. And the last book I read in July is one of my all-time favourites and that is Undercover Princess which is the first Rosewood Chronicles book by Connie Glynn. This is a book about Lottie Pumpkin who goes to her dream school which is Rosewood Hall and is put in a dorm room with Ellie Wolf, who is the princess of Maradova. Rumours start flying around the school of who is actually the princess and there's a big mix up and that leads to having the Undercover Princess in the story but I won't tell too much about it so you can read it for yourselves. Now this is actually a reread for me. I read this book mm, December 2017 I want to say. I absolutely love it. It's just got a vibe all of its own. This is a book that does do the school aspect of it so right. I love it so much. It's just got this magical feel that's completely its own thing. There's a little bit of magical realism in it which is fantastically done. There's also plenty of mystery like who is the person threatening who they think is to be the princess and there's a couple of riddles as well there's a riddle called the vixen and the delicate mouse which i love but i can't tell you why i love it because it'll give it away but i love that and i love william tufty and i love the little nuggets of like lgbt community that we get in there but it's not put at the forefront so connie glenn hasn't made a big deal of like putting lgb characters into it which is good she don't want authors going like big hour look i've got an lgbt character in my book 
can read it as like a queer bounty type of thing it should be just normalized like this is but not only that, there's also hints for there to be a big, bigger LGBT theme to come along in the other books, which I'm excited about. But I just like that she treats it completely normal, the way that society should treat it completely normal. And it's just, it's the William Tufty, you've just got to read it to find out. But it's very good and I know this is making me not explain this very well. The other reason why I love this book so much is because I've been following Connie Glynn on her YouTube channel for years and years and I can see the references that she's put in this, where they've come from, what parts, references or things that she actually likes or places that she's been, a couple of Star Wars ones in there as well. So I just feels like I've had an insight by reading it and being able to spot these references into how she's written the book which is so cool. So it's just it's just got its own vibe because I feel like I can see the writing process in it and I just love it so much. <laughs> so I've given this five stars for my reread. So those were the four books I've read in July. Like, comment and subscribe and I shall see you in the next video.